Tequila. In today's morning rounds, we're focusing on CBD. Do you know what that is? The compound that's popping up in everything from food to beauty products. CBD, which comes from plants in the cannabis family, has been marketed as a solution for anxiety, pain, and epilepsy, too, with Walgreens and CVS expanding into hemp hemp derived CBD products, the FDA is taking a closer look at the unregulated market. Outgoing FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb told lawmakers the other day he is uneasy about the drugstore chain's decisions. CVS says it follows FDA guidance. The agency will hold a public hearing next month. Our Dr. Tara Narul is, is here to sort it out. I don't know. What are you here to do? <laughs> She is here to sort it all out for us. Yes. Start start with me, because I always thought, number one, I need a new tongue, but that's another story. <laughs> but I always thought it had something to do with marijuana. I think there's a lot of confusion in the so general public. So it's not just me. No, it is okay, not just good. you. So let's start with the cannabis plant. The cannabis plant has over 100 types of cannabinoids. These are chemical compounds. Mm -hmm. The most common two types are THC, which is the psychoactive type that you think of in marijuana, and CBD, cannabidiol, which does not have abuse or addictive potential, is not psychoactive. We know that the body, we learned this in the 1990s, has our own endogenous cannabinoid system. We produce our own, and there are receptors spread throughout our brain, multiple organs, and our immune cells. So it makes sense that these products may have some effect on the different parts of the body, um, as they claim. Although, at this point, the market is is really way beyond where the science is. So even shows. though it comes from the cannabis family, it cannot get you high? No, not okay. CBD. Yeah. But that's really interesting because every once in a while with these things pop up, St. John's Ward and Ginkgo Biloba and this and that and the other thing. And so this feels like that. But what you're saying is, no, this has, there's actually, with these receptors and our own ability to produce it, there is something that's connected Innate, here. Innate, yes. Yeah. I mean, we learned but, about this just in the 1990s. So it's yeah, really but is there scientific evidence that it's an effective treatment for pain or anxiety? Very good question. Well, <laughs> the best evidence. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> the best evidence comes from studies on epilepsy. So in 2018, the FDA did approve a drug, Epidiolex, for use in two rare syndromes of sort of refractory seizure disorders in children. There is growing evidence for other conditions, anxiety, high blood pressure, acne, diabetes, but these studies are small. They've been done, a lot of them, in animals, and they really haven't followed people out for a long time. So we do need more research at this point. Negative side effects, any? So the concern that Dr. Gottlieb raised is, is valid, which is that we don't know what is the effect of differing concentrations of CBD, what is the effect of cumulative exposure chronically over a long time. In addition, we know that a lot of CBD products that are out there now are mislabeled. There was a study in 2017 that showed 70% of CBD products on the market are wrongly labeled. They either have other things in them, they don't have the amount of CBD they say they have in it, either less or more. There's concerns about pregnant women, youth exposure, also medication interaction. So, for example, people who take Coumadin, that blood thinner, if they take CBD, the Coumadin levels may be increased or interaction with supplements. So, hmm. lots of questions. But generally speaking, people are taking it to relieve anxiety. All kinds of things, from skin conditions to anxiety. It's, it's very prevalent. It's everywhere. Okay. Yes. Dr. Narula, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.